finally, the wait is over. The fastest sprinter on earth, Cheetah, has been reintroduced in India. After a gap of seven decades, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on his birthday released these cheetahs brought from Namibia in Kono National Park, Madhya Pradesh. The introduction of cheetah in India is being done under Project Cheetah, which is the world's first intercontinental large wild carnivore translocation project. Hello, I'm Bhavna Naya and you're watching Sunset TV and we bring you a special report on this historic occasion. After making 8,000 kilometers transcontinental journey in 10 hours, five female and three male African cheetahs returned to the new home in India. These eight cheetahs have been brought from Namibia under an MOU signed on the 20th of July 2022. Five female cheetahs are aged between two and five years, while the males are aged between 4.5 and 5.5 years. A special cargo plane carrying these big cats arrived in Gwalior in Madhya Pradesh on Saturday morning from Namibia and cheetahs were flown to the Kuno National Park. This historic mission marks the first time that a wild Southern African cheetah has been introduced in any other continent. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on his birthday released the first batch of eight cheetahs. On this historic occasion, the Prime Minister announced that Cheetah will add biodiversity in Kuno as well as boost tourism. Kuno National Park, when Cheetah will be able to do the grassland ecosystem will be restored. The biodiversity will be added. In the days, यहाँ इको टूरिज्म भी बढ़ेगा, यहाँ विकास की नई संभावनाएं जन्म लेगी, रोजगार के अवसर बढ़ेंगे। The reintroduction of the world's fastest animal in India's ecosystem has taken place after a gap of almost seven decades. The cheetah is believed to have disappeared from the Indian landscape in 1947 when Maharaja Ramanuj Pratap Singh Dev of Korea princely state hunted down and shot the last three recorded Asiatic cheetahs in India. It was officially declared extinct by the Indian government in 1952. It is expected that the cheetah's reintroduction would help in the restoration of open forest and grassland ecosystems in India. Restoring the animals which is coming from different continent is altogether different. Their ecology is different, their ecosystems are different, their food habits are different. So there are almost all things which has been considered in the in restorations process. So overall the procedures for the restorations is a unique and quite different. Special arrangements have been made for hassle-free introduction of the cats in the Kuno National Park. These cheetahs would be quarantined for one month in special enclosures. They will be released in the park once they adapt to the new surroundings. Radio collars have been strapped on all the cheetahs to be monitored through satellites. Each cheetah will also get a dedicated monitoring team. The team will make constant assessments via satellite radio collars. The enclosure will have eight doors. In addition, cameras have been installed for maintenance and protection. Sufficient prey base and watering holes are available in the park. The experts from Namibia will stay in Kuno for the next few months to help the spotted cats adapt well to the new environment. The real challenges start when they are moved out of the enclosures totally because that is when it becomes sort of a free-ranging animal. 
uh, th that is the one when they start competing with f competing for food with the others like the leopard is one of the wild animals which is more aggressive and uh, uh, ambushing animal and very stealthy unlike the cheetah which is more docile in comparison to that one. So that is one challenge which would be faced by the cheetah there. Uh, in addition, uh, the feral uh, dogs which are there uh, which could uh, pose a threat to these animals. The most important aspect is the man-animal conflict which may arise when the free-ranging animal it moves out of the boundary and kills uh, domestic cattle or uh, injures uh, any person accidentally. The cheetahs introduced are not the Asiatic subspecies of Asinonyx jubatus vineticus that went extinct, but their African cousins, the Asinonyx jubatus jubatus. Genetically, if we see, there are two strains of cheetahs. One is African cheetah and other is Asiatic cheetah. Genetically, they are different, but yes, it is true that the strain which has been brought here in our country is an African cheetah. This is very important again. They are quite adaptive in our ecosystem. So we can say that the Asiatic cheetah or the African cheetah which has been brought here will be adaptive, will be, will be successfully establish their own race. If the project cheetah turns out successful, the cheetah could be considered for reintroduction in other states including Gujarat, Rajasthan, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. Retired bureaucrat and wildlife conservationist Dr. M. Ranjit Singh, who was the member of the expert committee on cheetah introduction appointed by the Supreme Court, feels that the real challenge begins now. Bringing in the cheetah is the beginning of the end, not the end. <laughs> Perhaps it is the end of the beginning. <laughs> the work starts now and that is where the government and the people will have to work together. You see, <clears throat> it's not just you release them and walk away. They'll have to be handled for a while. <clears throat> it took two to three hundred years to get the animal extinct, give it 20-30 years to re-establish itself. All across the globe, the compelling need of conserving the large carnivores and their ecosystems is being acutely felt as they balance the intricate food chain of nature. Reintroduction, conservation or translocation are gradually being used as tools to halt or reverse the decline. With Project Tiger, Project Lion and Project Elephant, India has over the past few years arrested the decline of these critically important species. The Project Cheetah in India rolls on as per International Union for Conservation of Nature guidelines. The Project Tiger, you have seen it is one of the best in the entire, entire world out of 52 uh, tiger reserves, uh, 70 have already, already been classified as under the uh, cats category. Uh, the number of tigers has also increased. We are, you can say, the global leaders that way. Project Elephant also has been a huge success. We have 32 project elephant areas as of now. Even project Lion also, the number of the uh, lions are increasing. The area is getting uh, better and better in every way. Similarly, I can see that Project Cheetah will also be very successful. We will be able to have a meta population of uh, meta population and viable population in Kuno Tiger Reserve, Kuno Reserve uh, very soon. Cheetahs are being reintroduced to restore the ecological moorings of Indian grasslands. Their return will check the unbridled growth of herbivores that threaten the open forest ecosystem. Their re-entry is also expected to bring in resources to restore neglected habitats that in turn will promote biodiversity and boost its ability to sequester carbon. Cheetah as a star attraction will promote ecotourism and enhance community livelihood. India is known for its tropical grasslands and forests which traditionally supported a variety of fauna and flora. 
But in the recent years, this forest acreage has gone down due to deforestation and unplanned lumbering. Henceforth, the project experts had to invest many months in locating the correct landscape for the cheetahs. And the Kuno National Park in Shopur district of Madhya Pradesh ticked all boxes. Spread over 748 square kilometers, Kuno National Park is part of the larger Shiopur Shivpuri dry, deciduous, open forest landscape spanning 6,800 square kilometers. Kuno offers the prospect of housing four large feline species of India the tiger, the lion, the leopard, and the cheetah to coexist as they did in the past. Kuno still remains one of the best habitat for cheetahs, uh, which has all sort of uh, habitat from mountains to grasslands. And not many people know that cheetahs are also found in dense forest uh, because a lot of perception is given that they only hunt in grasslands, but they're also found in all sort of uh, area in southern, uh, southern Africa. The Kuno National Park currently can accommodate up to 21 cheetahs. And once restored, the larger landscape can hold about 36 cheetahs. This park was originally developed to be the second home for Asiatic lions in India besides Gir. It was selected as habitat for the African cheetah by a Supreme Court mandated expert committee in 2021. The experts say the climatic niche of the cheetah from Southern Africa exists in India with Kuno National Park having a high probability of cheetah habitat suitability. The South Africans themselves have said that their most successful cheetah rehabilitation sites have been in, in grassland forest mosaics where the forest is thicker than in Kuno. So why are we being naysayers? The cheetah will give the habitats in Kuno grandeur and Kunu will give, the habitats will give cheetah life. The two are synonymous. The park is ready with the required level of protection, prey and habitat to house the cheetahs. The forest department in Bhopal has herded 250 cheetal or spotted deer as the prey into the enclosure for cheetahs. Relocation of the villages was done. Uh, the, it's supposed to be the voluntary relocation of the villages. So that is less of human interaction with the uh, wild animals introduced there. That's first. Second is that awareness about these animals and uh, amongst the local population through the cheetah mitras which have been uh, uh, have been nominated in the state and who would be uh, create who have been creating awareness about these things and the third preparation which has been told is that the all the feral dogs which are there in the vicinity they have been uh, vaccinated so that the canine distemper or the rabies is not spread to uh, these animals uh, the ch by uh, chance contact with these animals emmy nominated wildlife filmmaker photographer and conservationist Vijay Bedi answers all the factors needed for the success of this ambitious project. Cheetahs are coming after many, many years to India. They have been feeding on their own prey base in Africa. But when we talk about India, they will be introduced to an entirely new prey base, which would be uh, spotted deer and chinkaras and uh, nilgai. And uh, though they are very young, which is about two to three years, the maximum is I think so four years old. So they are well, they are wild, they are very able to, able to hunt these prey base, but it will be always a big challenge for cheetahs to adapt in India. It's time for a break here. After the break, we shall delve on the factors that lead to the extinction of this magnificent species in India. Keep watching Sensor TV. We'll be back after a short break.
Welcome back after the break. You're watching our special report on cheetah making comeback. This feline species witnessed around 90% reduction from a century ago. It is the only extinct large mammal in independent India. Only 7,000 cheetahs are left in the world. The numbers are down from an estimated 14,000 cheetahs in 1975. Their population is now confined predominantly to six African countries. Angola, Namibia, Zimbabwe, Botswana, South Africa, and Mozambique. The species is already extinct in Asia with only about 12 Asiatic cheetahs left in the wild in Iran. The number of cheetahs have declined due to many reasons like human-wildlife conflict, loss of habitat, loss of prey and the illegal wildlife trade since they primarily occupy areas without dense vegetation, cheetahs run in conflict with farmers and become easy targets. Cheetahs currently also face double whammy as their prey base consisting of antelopes, gazelles, impalas and warthogs are fast vanishing in the savanna areas. This charismatic species has a deep-rooted past in India. It was a cat easy to tame, kept as a pet and used in hunting antelopes. The name cheetah originates from Sanskrit, meaning the spotted one. They are found in cave paintings at Kharwai and Karabad in Madhya Pradesh, as also at Chatur Bhujnath in the Upper Chambal Valley. These paintings are dated between 2500 to 2300 BC. The Indian emperors used to tame cheetahs and use them as status symbols. We have no records of cheetah population, but um, <clears throat> Jahangir records that in his father's time, as I said, a thousand cheetah at one time and over 9,000 cheetahs he, ca he had in captivity over his period of 50 years of reign. So that was the number he had over a 50 years. So, I mean, in those days to capture, and there were special places to capture them, one of the places was near Kuno. By the time the British started recording cheetahs' existence from around the last decades of the 18th century, these cats were heading towards extinction. By the end of the 20th century, not a single cheetah was left in the country. The main purpose of the Britishers was to extract the as much timber as possible. So this causes the loss of habitat, number one. Number two, the destructions of habitat made the cheetah vulnerable for extinctions and hunting. They also promoted a new philosophy to hunt the cheetah. If a person hunts a cub, they will be rewarded by the Britishers to the tune of six rupees per cub. And accordingly, for the adults, they were rewarding 12 rupees per adult. The plight of the cheetah in India was acknowledged by the government of India way back in 1952 during the first wildlife board meeting. Initially, negotiations had commenced with Iran in 1970s for bringing the Asiatic cheetah to India in exchange for the Asiatic lions. But the talks could not fructify. The discussions to bring back cheetahs were revived in 2009 by the Wildlife Trust of India. In 2010, the central government set up an expert panel for reintroducing the cheetah in India. In 2012, the Supreme Court restrained the implementation of the cheetah reintroduction program. And after a long legal battle, Supreme Court in 2020 allowed the centre to introduce African cheetah to a suitable habitat in India. The project then gathered speed and finally the idea of African cheetah introduction project in India 
is now turning into a reality. Cheetah ID introduction was talked about since 2009 and uh, since then a uh, lot of uh, scientific and critical inputs have gone in and ultimately when uh, Supreme Court gave the green signal in 2020, uh, it took uh, fast pace and uh, today we are where we are and uh, we are seeing the cheetahs being uh, reintroduced in our country. Uh, which is a, certainly a proud moment for all of us for the reason that uh, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a, para a new paradigm in the management of the grassland ecosystems. In 1973, India created dozens of tiger reserves. Over two decades later, tiger numbers more than doubled. This success story was driven by the simple logic that protecting good tiger habitats from human activity will allow tiger numbers to bounce back. There is no reason a similar will within the Indian Forest Department and conservation community shouldn't script a success story with the cheetah. According to experts, cheetah will do well as India has the history of their presence. And for your information, it is the first time since 1948 India will be home to all of the big cat species in the old world. Tigers, lions, leopards, snow leopards and now cheetahs. That's all we have in this special report. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Namaskar.